I went back and forth on whether or not to share this today. I planned on doing a lessons from the best non-fiction books post, but this came to me and I thought if I don't post this now, I might chicken out and never share it. So it feels a little intimidating to talk about this because it's something close to my heart, but I think it's important because if you've been struggling with the idea of writing a book, it might just give you the encouragement that you need. I'll also give you a bit of insight into why ghostwriting matters to me. I'm Liz, the writer behind Green Goose Ghostwriting. I help entrepreneurs who want to write a book to demonstrate authority in their niche and get more speaking engagements. I write your book in your own voice so you can share your message, inspire others, and finally level up your business. If you've been following me a bit, you'll know that I'm taking Jenny Shee's business coaching course. It's called Make It Work Online, it's great, and this week is all about fear. And it made me consider the fears I have around my own business. Now, I don't really feel much fear around the actual work. I always am concerned with doing the best job I can because I'm conscious that someone's put their trust in me. But doing the actual work itself is, it's where I feel comfortable, it energizes me, I'm good there. If I do have any fear, it's more around the running of the business. And of course, a big part of that is because I want to provide for my family. I want to have the money to take my son on adventures and do fun things together. But I realized that there's something going on that's a little bit deeper. And it's important to me to be successful, I think, because what I do is important. And when I say that out loud, my inner devil pops up on my shoulder and says, ah, you're just a writer, you're not a doctor, you're not doing anything for charity or whatever. But despite not being a doctor or ending world hunger, I do think what I do is important for one key reason, and that is that everyone has the right to speak. I don't think we're entitled necessarily to be heard. I mean, there are a few exceptions, democratic government, committed relationships, uh, but for the most part, I don't think we deserve to be heard. It's not your human right to be listened to, but you are entitled to speak. It's your right to say what you wanna say. And you don't have to earn that right either. You don't have to have worked in your industry for however many years. You don't have to have served a certain number of clients or have a multi-million dollar business. Some of those things are really useful for getting heard, but none of those benchmarks are required for you to have the right to say what you want to say. You can probably tell that I'm not American, I'm English and I live in Canada, um, but a lot of you watching this are in the States, I know. and you guys know that this is recognized in your constitution. It's the constitutional right to free speech. And even if you're not in the States and your government doesn't have an equivalent, it doesn't matter because what we're talking about is a human right. Every human on this earth is equal. So we all have this right. We should all be able to speak when we want to. The problem and the beauty of this world is that even though we're all equal, we're not all the same. And that means that some people are great at speaking what's on their mind, they have no qualms writing a book and saying what they wanna say and sharing their words with the world. And that's awesome. But others aren't like that. They have that imposter syndrome that says, who am I to say this? Or they wonder what writing a book might say about your ego. Some people are okay with that stuff because they know that what they have to say is important and even if it isn't, they know they have the right to say it anyway. Um, but they get frustrated instead with the actual process of writing. It's not their forte. They can think it all through, but getting it down on the page is really hard. Or some people don't have the time between earning enough to support your family, taking your kids to soccer practice, making dinner, the odd Netflix date with your partner, but if you're not a naturally gifted writer or you're wrestling with the mindset stuff or you're busy doing important things in your life, you still have the same right to speak as everyone else. The fact that we're all born equal is something that I feel really deeply 
we all have the equal right to speak and I don't think it's okay if someone doesn't get to do that just because writing isn't their thing or because they've been busy contributing to the world or their family in another way. So that's why I'm drawn to ghostwriting. It sounds stupid, but I feel like it's my little bit to contribute to equality. It's my little bit of balancing the scales for the people in the world who are struggling to say what they want to say. <laughs> of course, there are other bigger ways to work towards equality and I plan to step up and do more of that stuff. But this still feels right. It feels good to help people say what's in their heart that they haven't been able to get down on the page. It feels right to help people speak to a bigger audience if that's what they feel drawn to do. We can't really control how people listen, but we can control our own actions and we can choose to exercise our right to speak, even if it doesn't come naturally, even if we need support from others to do it. We have the right to speak. And I hope that remembering that encourages you to use your own voice. If you want to get 15 writing tips from today's top entrepreneurs so that you feel more confident exercising that right, sign up below this video and I will send them over to you. You'll also get more cool stuff about writing for your business each week. And I will see you next time.